Hi everyone. I find I've been fascinated with rain recently and not because it's it's always happening, but because it's very easy to paint and it's really evocative. So come and join us. We're going to paint a scene on the Thames today. Okay. I'm going to take this big brush for my background and I want to make a pale blue. So I'm going to add a bit of blue to the white quite a lot I need, quite a lot of paint for this one. So let's see, with that paint what I want to do is I want to do some strokes down from the top of the canvas, down like that. Not all the way across, just like that. It's getting a bit drier as well. So I'm going to add some white in there too. Put some white strokes coming all the way down the canvas. Some of the blue, some of the white, not all of it. Most of that light blue stripe is going to be concentrated in the top of the canvas here. There we go, one or two down to the bottom. And in the gaps, I'm going to put the white. So that's going to be white to blend that blue down a little more. There we go. So I've got some white and blue streaks going all the way down. Dried. Sort of dry. So from here, I want to measure from about above the halfway mark on the left-hand side of the canvas to around about the middle mark on the right hand side and I'm going to take some black with this angled shader, put some black there, add a touch of white to it so it's only a, a, a dark grey as opposed to black and I want to take a line from about there to about there. Let's see what that is. So I'm using the side of that brush and I'm going to make a line that goes like that. Above this line we're going to paint London. So I'm going to add some more grey, so there's some more white to that black. Let's paint London in this top scene here. Now London is full of different levels and picture and 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 um, shapes. So what I'm going to do is give myself a base like that, which is going to be at a straight across the canvas. So all of that in that light grey is the base of the buildings. all the way across. Now I want to make the shapes of the buildings. Let's put Big Ben in first. Big Ben is kind of the centre, so let's put Big Ben in the centre here. Let's put a shape of Big Ben here. He goes like he's... Big Ben is probably the width of this brush. And then there's a few extra bits across the top which look kind of like that. So it's a block across the top. So just give yourself a few extra shapes. They do not have to be perfect. We are in the rain here, so everything's just a little blurred. So there's my Big Ben shape in the rain. I'm going to straighten up some of those edges there. Bring that down. Right, Big Ben. Beside Big Ben, there's a few little odd shapes that look like this. You can go and find yourself a, 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 a the horizon. This is actually from the bank of the Thames on the other side, so you can find yourself a horizon to paint. I'm just putting in a few imaginary shapes alongside it. We do have the tower 
as well. So let's put the tower in and I'm going to put it, it's not quite as high as Big Ben in this picture and it's quite, it's a bit wider. So let's make it that wide. Slightly wider than my brush and the tower has got crenellations across the top. Like that. So that's my tower. And then an interesting shape of the Houses of Parliament, I think it is, right there. Let's put some more shapes in beside them. Let's put another one there. Just a little bit taller. Bring that across a bit. So I'm getting my different views of the city across there. And let's put a few extra shapes in this section here. Slightly down, some above, some are sharp, some are lower. It's not exact. Let's put a few some few shapes here. You can see as I'm painting these shapes in, the colours of my grey are changing as well. Very, very slightly, but it's enough that you can see that some of those buildings are separated from the others. There's a bit of highlight and shadow in them, like that. Let's make some more across this side. So it's not all one block of solid grey. Let's put a few shapes here. Let's put a building on this side here. I think that one will do there. Put another one there that's slightly higher. As I said, you can go and find yourself a um, horizon skyline view of London and paint that in here. Mine is from the imagination. I've just got Big Ben in there. I know Big Ben, so that's what's painted in mine. Let's put a few more blocks of buildings because I know we have some skyscrapers coming in this area here and do something like that there. Put a few differentiations in grey in that block there just moving it straight down and then I have a variation of colours which is going to fade into the background in my rainy day. Okay. This is the walkway along the Thames so what I'm going to do is not quite the width of this brush. So that brush is that wide, not quite the width of the brush. I'm going to start from there and I'm going to bring a nice strong dark grey line, not 100% black, dark grey line across like so. This, because it's perspective, is starting smaller on this side, but it will end bigger this side. So let's measure that. This brush here is going to be probably one, two, three widths of that brush all the way down. So from there, I'm going to put a line that goes all the way down to there. This is a perspective. So that's going to be painted now in a dark grey all the way across and I'm painting it down because this walkway edge does have railings that go down so this will give an idea of the railings I'm going to put some lighter grey in there again but using that brush it's giving the idea of railings going back pointing my brush straight up like that. Okay. And because it's perspective, the railings are, are further apart on this side, tighter together that side. Right. Let's put a... using the same brush, it's a, a nice, it gives me a nice point, a nice edge. You can use one of the smaller round brushes to do this, so there's a small round brush there that for that purpose, but I am going to get a nice smooth edge with this brush. I'm going to put myself a lamp post about here. The lamp post is going to be higher than Big Ben in the background so using the side of that brush I'm going to bring it all the way down straight as I can down to the railing. Then there's a shape on this lamp post. The lamp post is a big square block coming down And then some interesting little square blocks in the middle here. Let's put a little square block there. Something that goes across there. Join that up to the base. 
This is my lamp post. That's all with this brush. I'll use the smaller brush to do the others. Let's put another one down, I'd say about here. So from the top of the railing down to the bottom of the railing, I'm going to put a block like that. And then using the tip of my brush, I'm going to paint a thin line coming down all the way down. it. And it certainly doesn't have to be straight. We've got rain. It's going to be a little bit blurred in the rain. So I've got a block there. I want another lamp post down this section here, so let's put a smaller line, a thinner line, coming down there. You can see this lamp post is a little bit t closer to that one, so perspective wise again, there's more distance between this lamp post and that one. Right, that brush is going to go away while we finish up our lamp posts. I'm going to take the smallest brush now for the detail. The detail on this lamp post. We have a few more lines on this lamp post like so. And then probably another one around about there. A little bit of a detail on the lamppost. And then definitely one on the top where the ball of light goes. Do the same detail on this lamppost here. So join something up there, make a little triangle, a little block, maybe a line, a line just a bit higher than that. Let's get some more black on that brush. A line probably about middle way there and then something that's going to hold the globe of the lamp post. Do the same here. We want a block of black across the bottom here, which is where the lamp post is attached to the floor. A few little interesting details here. A line there, a line there and something that holds a little line across the top that holds that light. So this one's light, it's higher than Big Ben, and perspective-wise, they're further apart and then closer together, those two. Taking the big brush, I do want to put the globe, the lamp, on the top of this. So I'm going to put a ball of light, which is our lamp post, on the top there. round circle of white. And I'm going to put a smaller one here, a round circle of white there, the lamp post there, and a blob on that one. They're getting smaller as they go away in the distance. Right, now I'm going to take the big brush again, and I want a watery grey to go across the base here. So what I'm going to do is the grey that I've got blended already and to add a lot of water to it, maybe a bit of white. I don't want it to be too dark, so let's just see what that does. Lots of water. Very watery grey. And what I'm going to do is take that watery grey, and you can see the blue underneath it now. And I'm going to spread that from left to right across the canvas, like that. More towards the base here. So that's pretty watery. You can see those blue stripes underneath it. As it comes closer to the bottom of the canvas, I want it to be a bit stronger. So let's add some more paint to that blend again. There. So it's darker. Make that go all the way across. More on the left hand side here as well. More on the left hand side. I have trees in this area here. This is the reflection of the trees. So let's make this a bit darker on the left hand side. So add a bit more colour in there. Still watery. And some colour on that side there. As you see, still watery so you can see the blue underneath. Maybe take it further right up to the top there because I know that I've got trees doing a little bit of a a shadowy watery effect in that section there. So this area I've left, this middle bit area, which we're, where we're going to put our, our feature child and the rest is now blended into a watery looking image. A few stripes, turning that brush sideways, a few stripes in there like that. And let's leave that for now. 
put that brush away. In here there's a shadow of the railing. So in this section here I need to blend a darkish grey, not quite as dark as the railing and not too watery. So this is using some solid colour here and I want to put the shadow of this railing coming in here like that and you can see it's not going to be one solid strip as I bring it down fatter here because the railing is fatter thinner at the back there like so all the way to the back all the way across you can make it a little bit darker towards the as it gets closer to the railing so maybe that section there closer to the railing is a little bit darker let's do the detail this should be dry now the white is dry yes let's do the detail on the lamp posts before we continue so I've moved to the thin brush again I went over that line so I want to put that line back in there the black line the lamp post is actually held together by a black thin black line of metal comes down in the middle of the lamp post and it goes around the outside edge of the lamp post like that thin black line And across the top there's a little blob on the top of that to hold it together. There's also at a, a downward smile I would say, painted downward smile, so what that does is it shows the curve of the lamp poster and it's towards the top of the ball. As you get further away you're not going to see so much detail on these lamp posts so what you probably would see is maybe a thin line, thinner than that even, a thin line of those two those two crossover pieces of metal that holds this lamp post together and then something on the top like so. Probably won't see all of that black and on this one you probably only see something that's on the top like that maybe a thin line down the side. So you lose the detail as you go further away into the distance. I have a blob of grey that I don't really like there so I'm going to wash my angled shader brush off, make sure, wipe it on the cloth and make sure that there's no colour on it. So now it's just got water on it and I'm going to rub over that grey patch and it will disappear. So it's, I've cleaned the brush off, I've got water on it, I've rubbed over that grey patch, which I must have nudged something as I was doing the painting, and I've removed it. You can do the same thing. If you have anything that shows up, you either add white to it or you wipe it off with water. Acrylics are a water-based paint. Okay, let's put our trees in. There are trees on the left-hand side of the canvas here. So I'm going to take a dark, a lightish grey, actually not too dark, so it's a mid grey. Something that's slightly darker than the houses in the background, than the detail of the buildings in the background. My first tree is right on the left hand side here, so I'm going to paint my first tree coming down and it's just along the edge of the, maybe a bit darker than that, it's just on the edge of the walkway railings and I'm going to take that tree up trees thicker at the bottom thinner at the top so remember that however thick you've done the trunk down here everything above is going to be a little bit thinner so let's take that trunk all the way up to there and maybe lob it off to the left hand side put a branch on the left hand side here maybe a branch the right hand side there and maybe one going up so 
We don't need too much detail on that tree because the next tree, a little bit darker again, so let's add some more black to that. I think I'm going to have to make that a bit darker at a later stage. Add some more black to that. The next tree is next door to it almost. So it's on this in between the lamp post and that tree. I'm going to put the next tree so it's just a little bit longer than the base of the railing and take that up. It's still too light a grey so I'm going to go over that tree. I'm going to take that tree up fairly straight. No, no trees ever 100% straight. Maybe lob a branch off in that direction there. Take this up a little bit further. So that goes higher, goes over the branches in the background. This branch maybe comes up and goes up there and then another branch there. Maybe there's one that goes off in that direction. And you can see now I'm making these branches thinner as they go further away from the tree. Maybe this one goes up there. Maybe there's a branch that goes off that direction there. So now my branches are starting to crisscross each other. Let's put another branch, I'd say, about there. And that one comes up and maybe goes off in that direction there, like that. So those branches are starting to crisscross each other. A hundred percent black now. The tree in the front, you know what, I'm going to make that a bit darker because it is shadow down the bottom here. Now 100% black. So let's load 100% black onto this brush and my next tree I'm going to put around there. So the my, this this light post is in between these two trees here. Let's make one that goes here. This one goes up here like that. Maybe it goes a little bit off to the side. This one's going to be thicker than those two there because it's closer. So maybe this goes off to the side, goes up still, like that, and then heads off in that direction there. Just lop a branch off from that side. Let's grow a branch from down here and take it up. And this branch could possibly be twisted off to the left hand side here, going up to the top of the canvas and then let's grow a few branches off it. So thinner, 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 thinner branches. So I'm using the very tip of this brush and I'm going to indicate some thin branches coming off there. Maybe I want another thick branch coming this direction here and take it up over these trees here. It's where they start crisscrossing on the left hand side. And I know there's a solid base to each of these trees, so let's put those in there, like that. So those trees are looking pretty interesting. Maybe a few thinner branches off here. Just going to add a few, some more black to these lamp posts to make them more solid. And to the base of these trees to make it more solid as well. Okay, let's put some shadows in or some reflections in. From this tree here, we know that it's going to reflect down this way, straight down in the water. So I'm going to put a few zigzaggy lines with this brush in the black coming down towards me and then this tree branches off. So it branches off here, around about there like so. So I'm going to do this to show that that tree does branch off, the reflection does branch off, and then it goes up and fades away into a pale grey. This, load up some more black on that brush again. This reflection, I know that this branch comes up this way, but then there is one that goes off in that direction. So these are the main branches I've done reflections on. Reflection of this one. Add some more black, do a zigzaggy line. This one comes up like so. Or as, I, as the reflection is um, equal and opposite, it comes down towards you. It's starting to get lighter gray. 
because I've got less paint on my brush as I go towards, as I bring it towards me. Um, but I do have a few other reflections off this way, kind of there. Because I started this very lowest branch reflection from, say, there, everything or all these other reflections should be a little bit above. Let's put a reflection of this tree in here. It's a little bit further back, and that's going off in that direction there, like that. So there I've got some watery, and it becomes a lot lighter as it comes towards you down here. So I'm following the line of those trees, bringing it towards me, and you can see there's zigzaggy lines, because there's water here, so the water is rippling. Same applies for the reflections of the lampposts. So let's put a dark reflection closer to the base of the lamppost and then zigzag it up and it's going to have a thin line like that for that reflection. Put some more black on that brush. Let's do one here. This is a reflection of this lamppost and it becomes a thin line. Zigzaggy, thin line, going to about there. I know there's a few interesting lines coming off it, corresponding to those. Let's do this reflection here. So it's the reflection starts as wide as the base and then gets thinner. Zigzagging gets thinner as it comes towards me or towards the base of the canvas. Now that line is going to be like so. thin line there, and maybe we've got an indication of that middle one there. That's where I want that reflection to end, right there. I'm going to wash that brush off. Now there is a reflection of the light. Let's. This light faded a little bit into the blue behind, so I'm going to put some more white in those in that light there. But the reflection of this light now, it's also a few blobs of white like that, coming towards the end of the canvas, the bottom of the canvas. The reflection of this light, a few blobs of light, like that. That's the reflection of that light in the, wa in the water of the walkway. Same as this one here, a few little blobs of white as a reflection. We've also got some light in Big Ben. The Big Ben has the clock. I'm going to put a, an oval of light on the right-hand side of the Big Ben clock tower and a smaller oval on the left-hand side, like that. So Big Ben's kind of turned. There's a few lights of these corresponding lights on the other side of the Thames. Let's put a few blobs of white in here, which will be the corresponding lights on the other side of the Thames of the walkway there. So I'm going to put a few lights like that going back into the distance here. Like so. You can do a few lights inside, indications of lights in these darker grey blobs, but you can see it's very, very light. I'm not doing a lot. These ones are the most important ones, these lights here. They need to be nice and white, like that. Okay, let's move on from there. Right, while we're waiting for the front bit to dry here, I'm going to do some vegetation on the trees. So what I've done is I've taken a very old brush of mine that has got bits and pieces coming off it. Those make very nice little leaves actually. So I'm going to wet that brush, dab that brush in the black. So the tip of that brush has got some black on it. I'm going to squeeze the brush together this way. So what happens is the bristles start getting interesting shapes. Then with that, I'm going to dab that on the canvas, like so, twisting it as I do, 
because these become the leaves of my tree. Loads more on there. I'm going to put some leaves on the tree coming off the edge of that branch that I put there and those tree leaves come a little lower down and to the left hand side they're a bit full because we've got three trees that we're painting leaves in for on this side. So dab some more across here. You can still see some sky underneath and I've gone across the trunks with this as well. So load some more black, get some nice dark leaves but thicker even because those ones are for the tree in the front. Now that I've got those leaves there, I'm going to need some corresponding leaves down here, but these ones are going to be a little bit grayer. So let's load some gray on that brush, push the bristles together like that. And then my leaves down here are going to be more watery kind of leaves like that. You can still see the trunks, but you can see that there's definitely some other reflections light grey reflections there. There's my tree reflections down the bottom here. That's all I need. I don't need any more for that tree. I've still got to wait for this to dry because this is not 100% dry. When this is dry, this was very watery, so when this is dry let's paint our girl. I'm making some pink using my round brush. It doesn't have to be a small round brush. So I've added some red and white together to make a pink. I want to paint a triangle. This is where my child is going to go. So I'm going to paint a triangle of pink here. That's going to be her hood, the hood of her jacket. Her rain jacket. That goes there. Lots of water on there. Let's make it a bit thicker. So that triangle there. There's more of a slope on the right hand side because she's looking down actually. So there we go. I want to paint a body of this rain jacket which is almost a rectangle. It's not very big either. It's under the hoodie so it's under that triangle. I'm going to leave a bit of a gap and I'm going to paint a rectangle which is only that long. It's not long. She's a little girl. That rectangle, which is the rest of her rain jacket, the back of her rain jacket. If you join the corner of this triangle, it's about the same width as the hoodie that I've done above. If you join the corner of that triangle to the middle of the hoodie, you get the slope of her shoulder. Same on this side. Join that to the corner over there on the right hand side and you will get her shoulder on that side. So the middle is painted and she's got a slope of a shoulder. Her arm's not very long. It's about half the length of this rectangle that you've done here and it goes down towards the left. She's swinging her left arm out. So with this I'm going to paint a length of arm which joins to the corner of that rectangle using the round brush to give me the shape. It's not a long arm. The next arm is even shorter and that comes out an angle because she's holding an umbrella with this other arm. So that comes from the corner of the rectangle and it's even shorter than that, than the, than the left arm here. So I'm just going to put a little blob of an arm on the left on the right hand side. She's holding her rain her umbrella with that one. Wash the brush off. And I'm going to load a blue for her jeans. Now the blue is a little dark, so it's it's got a shadow on it. So blue and black, a mix of blue and black gives you a denim colour. So uh, her legs are in the middle of the body, two legs together, about the width that you've done that arm there, which is the width of this brush, I'm going to put a very small 
leg on the left hand side. The width of that arm is the width of this leg and it's very small. It's probably less than you've painted on that side there and there's one right next to it. So she's got two legs, there's her jeans and they're in the middle of this jacket. This one's a little bit behind so I'm going to make that slightly longer. So when you've painted that Let's do her Wellingtons. Her Wellingtons are bright red. And all I'm going to do is extend this leg down, not quite as wide as her trousers, like that. And that's her Wellington for that side. A little bit longer. She's got a Wellington on this side. There's a gap in the middle because it's not quite as wide as her trousers. So they come almost to the same level. Those Wellingtons. And then the heel, the base of that Wellington is that denim color that you've used for her trousers. All you do is you put a little circle underneath that Wellington base and then take it up a little bit to the right hand side of the Wellington. That's the side of her shoe. Well, we had a bit of a blip with recording, so now you see a shadow on the little girl's rain jacket. What I did was I took some denim colour and I painted it on the left hand side of her jacket and hood and underneath her arms, across the bottom of her jacket and hood. Try that now. Okay, let's paint her umbrella. Her umbrella is going to have a handle. So the handle I'm going to make from the middle of her arm and it goes up the, in that direction there, not long, to about the base of her, her hoodie or just a little bit above the base of her hoodie. The base of the umbrella is going to be at a right angle to that line. So let's do that. So let's paint a right angle in red across there. That's where umbrella is going to come. And then I'm going to put a an upside down cup. So it's round, take it round to the middle and bring it down on either side there. An upside down cup. But her umbrella does have some detail across the bottom which is some points. So let's just point some points into her umbrella like that. Each of the edges has a point and that's her umbrella shape there. That handle comes out across the top of her umbrella so what I'm going to do following the line of that handle I'm going to put a little blob of black on the top of her umbrella there. So that's her umbrella. But what I'm going to do here is add a bit of red shadow into this area of her jacket under her arm because we only had pink there so just add a bit of red into the base of her jacket like that just add some more detail there. Now all that we have left really is white highlights so if I wash that brush off, it's the thinner brush, I'm loading only white onto that brush. I'm going to put some highlights into her jacket. So I'm going to put some white highlights going down the side, across her shoulders and down the side of her arm, down the side of her jacket like that, down the side of her hoodie. So where we've got shadow on the left hand side, we have highlight on the right hand side. Let's put some highlight into her umbrella. It's still wet, so but that's fine because that's turned pink. I'll add some more white in there when that's dry. So there's some highlight there too. We also need some splashes. She's splashing the water. She's playing in a puddle. So I'm going to take some watery grey. Lots of water in this grey mix. And with that watery grey, I'm going to put a few lines which will highlight the water. If I put some lines going 
at a horizontal line to her body. Some dark lines coming in there. We need to do a reflection of her as well. So before we put the white in, let's do a reflection of her. I'm going to take the denim colour and put some denim colour under her foot. Just a few blobs of denim colour under her foot. And then coming up a little bit there. So I'm leaving some area for her the red of the reflection of her boots. That denim colour gives me an idea of where to put the rest of the red. So just a blob, a couple of blobs of denim colour there. They're quite watery blobs. We are looking at a reflection. And then I'm going to take some pink. Let's add a touch more red and a bit more water. So it's more of a watery red than the pink bit more water again and with that watery red let's put some reflection so it's a few watery red blobs still keeping them horizontal on the canvas and some more above so let's put some watery because now we're doing the reflection of her jacket here so we're going to take a few stripes like we did here a few stripes of pink watery pink into this area coming down towards me here. Let's add a bit more red into that on the left hand side. Like so. She's got her arm sticking out there and an arm there and there's a bit of a reflection of her umbrella on the right hand side here. So I haven't kept it umbrella shape. It's just an indication that there could be something red reflecting here by some stripes of red in the water. I'm going to wash that brush off. We now need white. So I'm going to put some white splashes underneath her feet here, which means from the right hand side, I'm going to take some white in this with this thin brush and put some white flicks of paint going off to the right. I'm going to do the same on the left with some white flicks of paint going off to the left like that. some white underneath that boot, the left boot, because we don't have the base of the boot there. And when I've done those flicks there, I'm going to put a few little dobs of white, because that's the splashes. A few little dobs of white around where the water's flicked up. There. I also need some reflection, some white reflections, crisscrossing my trees, I think, in the, in the side here. So on the left hand side, with some white, I'm putting some horizontal white lines. And you don't need a lot to show that there's water on the floor here. Just a few maybe a few coming on this side as well, going across our lamp post this side. A few white horizontal lines. And that shows that there's water on the floor there. Take it across here. This should now be dry. So let's add a touch of nice white light, maybe a few blobs of paint of water on her umbrella. And the last thing I want to do is have a bit of fun with my work, my water. So I'm going to take this angled shader, put a little bit of white on the very tip of the angled, angled shader, like that. Take my finger and flick some of that white onto the canvas, like that. Slightly above the canvas, so you hold the brush slightly above the canvas. Don't load too much white onto your brush. And then with your finger, like that, flick the bristles down towards the canvas and what I'm doing there is I've got some splashes I've got some very small splashes of water what you can do too is with that thin brush 
the water is landing and splashing up so you could do a few small flicks of water splashing up as it lands on the ground it just splashes up a little so I'm using that small brush and I'm just going to put a few little flicks of water where I've where my uh, my spots of white paint have landed there and I think I've painted a nice rainy day scene in London I'm going to sign it with a dark grey on the side here and I'm going to Sign your picture and enjoy. See you next time.